Hi everyone, it's Cheyenne and today I want to talk about how to house hunt for Airbnb. What to look for and what to look out for when buying a home for Airbnb. This past month, I have been house hunting for my second Airbnb property and I thought it would be a great way to share my tips and advice on how to simplify that process because I know it gets a little bit stressful. So let's get into it. So the first thing that you need to do before you even start looking at houses, you need to understand the short term rental laws and restrictions. I would go on the county website, look at the zoning and ordinance, and usually they'll say something about short term rental laws and just like the township and the county. And if you really want to, you can also give them a call as well and ask them but usually just going on the website is enough if there is short-term rental restriction in that area sometimes there is certain zoning areas that is short-term rental friendly and some of them are not so sometimes they have a map on that so you can just like download a map and you could see which area it is friendly or not another thing is HOA communities. So I used to be very, very against HOA communities because I just feel they have a lot of power. They really can, if they don't like you, if your neighbors don't like you, or if they have a complaint, they can really rule you out. But now I am a little bit okay with them. And sometimes if you don't want to deal with it at all, in Zillow, there's a HOA um, filter. So you can just put like none for it. But just keep in mind with the HOA community, just go on their website because it's another, literally a different ordeal than like the township itself. So I would say look into that. But I would say be wary because a lot of times if the HOA community is accepting like short term rentals, there's probably like some fee to that as well. So I would say look into that. Understand the short term rental process, like putting your house on Airbnb in that HOA community. This is to really understand, to have clarity on what it is that you're looking for and to save that time. This is gonna be your compass when you are indecisive about a certain home and you're just like overwhelmed. You're like, there's so many houses to save. How do I make time? And this is where it comes in. You need to make a criteria checklist. For example, the price. What is it the price you're looking for? Is it under 400K? Is there like a price range, right? And be honest, like, okay, 400K means it's a super turnkey property. I don't want to do any renovations. So you have to understand the price and the budget for yourself. I am looking for at least a three bed and two bathroom. Like for me, that's like one of my requirements. So you have to create this checklist of prioritizing which one is the most important. So it could be like price and it could be like the type of house and all these stuff. So also I would say come up with like at least 10 and pick your like top five. So now I'll talk about what I look for when I'm there, like in action, looking at the houses and stuff. So the first thing um, I'm looking for is a turnkey property, a move in ready. So I really don't want to have that many renovations. Like I want very little like renovations. And it's something that I just learned from my first Airbnb property because it's really time, like time is the essence. Like you wanted to be less on Airbnb right away and start making money. And that's the thing. So the first thing that I look for is flooring. I like to check the living room is at least like a hardwood floor, just not carpet. The hangout areas, I don't want them to be carpet. I want just to be just hardwood flooring. And Bedroom, it's fine if there's carpets on there, but I just prefer non-carpet, but it's fine. Bedroom is fine. Another thing that I check is also kitchen. And I don't, it's fine if it's not the fanciest kitchen, but how I go about it is like, I ask myself, can I deal with this kitchen? Can I, can I deal with the design and the layout and the vibe of the kitchen? Like there is some old outdated kitchen, but you can still make it modern by maybe painting the cabinets or maybe just going along with that vintage kitchen vibe. I really don't want to 
do a lot of work in, in the kitchen. And another thing I look is for bathroom. So for the bathroom, I'm really looking for just the shower tub and the tile to be fine. I guess for the vanity and toilet, I can replace that. That's not that hard. But there are some like bathrooms that I've seen is like really old and outdated. I mean, like the tile, the tiles were pink. The toilet itself was pink and the tiles and the shower tub was pink. I don't know if this is like a 80s thing, like why it's pink, I have no idea, but I just like, what am I gonna do with the pink toilet? Like, you know, like what? The only thing I'm willing to do is to change the lights and change the vanity and maybe toilet. I want the living room to be spacious. So it's just something that I learned is that like my home right now is on the smaller side and that was fine because that was something that I wanted to start out with but now I want my second Airbnb property to be bigger I just want the living room to be spacious I want it to be more of the hangout area and I want to accommodate more guests my first Airbnb property is about six guests like my second one I want to try to accommodate um, about eight guests so I want to have a spacious living room specifically hopefully with a fireplace and the second thing is I want a basement or a spare room, but I really want to have a game room. I just want to have like one living room area and one hangout section, session where pe there's a foosball table, there's a billiard table or a ping pong table. I just really want this Airbnb to be more of an experience and that's what it is. I want people to come and just want to stay at my airbnb and not go i think it depends the area that you're looking for but i am looking more of a chalet and cabin type of house i think it's I, i'm like in that phase like i just really like that look and something that is high ceiling high ceiling specifically in the living room i like my first airbnb property where there's like the wood wood beam so i'm looking for that so something that is high ceilings, a lot of natural sunlight, and more chalet and cabin -y type of feel. I would really prefer it it's secluded. I don't want to have a next door neighbor. I just want my guests to have privacy and also um, be able to put a sauna or a hot tub. I really want to make this an experience. Like I really want my guests to just stay at my airbnb property and don't want to leave and that is something that i'm looking for and yeah so that comes to the end of my video i hope this was helpful for you guys um i the past month i went to this airbnb for my birthday and it was like this amazing amazing airbnb i'm like oh my gosh it was like breathtaking like the host was amazing and she was literally goals her house was gold like goals goals <laughs> i'm like saying gold or something and my friends and i did not want to leave we're like yeah we're gonna stay at this airbnb property we are not even gonna go out to eat we're gonna get takeout it was that amazing and i just want to give that same experience to my guests and let them create memories as well and honestly it was one of the best girlfriend like girl trip i've had and yeah, I hope this video was helpful. So until next time. Oh yes, and also like I mentioned, YouTube YouTube short series. You should you should check that out because I share my journey and I want you guys to be part of that journey and let me know if that Airbnb is worthy or if I should get it or not. And yeah, I wanna I want you guys to be part of this journey as well. So alrighty. Okay, I'll talk to you later.